All right, if you're hearing a blowing sound, it's my heater. Nothing I can do about it at the moment. So anyway, um, DMT here today. We're looking at the Scars of Mirrodin block, um, or rather the new Mirrodin block, I guess, which is kind of lackluster and disappointing <laughs> compared to the old one, which had affinity up the ass and really broke magic as a whole. And Wizards probably still hasn't learned from that lesson because the past couple of years have been really Planeswalker oriented decks. We had the, um, you had the Super Friends deck and then just recently another deck comprised around Planeswalkers won it and it's all because of Jace the Mind Sculptor. So, but more into that later and why I think Wizards, are, Wizards is becoming dumb fuck Konami retarded. But first let's get into the main meat, the Mirrodin block. Um, we'll start with Scars. Scars is actually an interesting set to say the least. Um, no one really saw Mirrodin returning very soon. Um, no one kind of expected them to go back to it. If you're a casual player from like, I want to say 2003, 2005, feel free to correct me on the dates because I think I, I probably sure they're wrong. But um, any casual players playing that format and messed around with the affinity um, knew how bad it was, how, how much it got. Basically, around that same time, in the Yu-Gi-Oh side, you had, um, the game was just starting up, and you had, I think you had Clown Control, I think I want to say, back then. And for those of you who don't know your Yu-Gi-Oh history, Clown Control is basically Dream Clown, put it in defense mode, and kill something on field. And back then, the power monsters weren't as needed for decks as they are now in that game. And slowly but surely, magic is becoming the exact same thing. Control the field, play a big monster, and win. It's an absolute retarded thing to do. Um, especially if the other player... Like, if you're losing to the other player, if they have something up on you, and all of a sudden you play a big, huge fucking creature, and you suddenly get the win, that's just retarded. <laughs> and I think that's why um, I'm starting to compare magic to that, because it's like... One card, it seems these days, in any game, it doesn't matter what you choose, um, seems to do that these days. So, it's kind of bumfuck retarded, but at the same time, it does add a little bit more replayability to the game. So, you can't really completely criticize it because of that. Because it does keep new players coming in and old players in. Some old players, probably like from 2003, have probably moved on and stuff. They don't really care about Magic anymore because it has gotten really retarded. I don't know why I still buy cards. <laughs> Just kidding. Um, but as for the Scar set itself, you got the Worm, you got... Um, I think it's Massacre Worm on the cover of the Scar set. I can't be sure, but... I think... No, the Worm, I think, is in Besiege. I think... Yeah, the Massacre Worm is in Besiege, I think. Well, feel free to correct me, but... Um, in terms of the story, so far all we know is, is that Vincer, El Vincer had to convince Elspeth to go there and... No, no, I'm sorry. I got the story all wrong. Um, we have Venser, Elspeth, Koth. Koth is a new Planeswalker in Scars. Koth is probably the best Planeswalker probably out of the block so far other than Elspeth. And the main reason why, if you build him up, Koth is probably the slowest ultimate to set off other than... Well, okay, let me put it to you this way. In terms of competitive uh, Planeswalkers, the most, the competitive Planeswalkers have really fuck, fucked up broken abilities. Um, if you could get him off in Koths, like, Koths is probably the best out of the block simply due to the fact that you get his ultimate off, you get an emblem that says um, all mountains, tap them, deal one damage to target creature or player while tapping for mana. That's pretty sick. That's pretty good. Um, and his other two abilities I don't really remember, nor does anybody give a fuck about those. Um, mostly they care about the ultimate on Koth, and Koth's ultimate is really good. He literally moves mountains, apparently, according to the end game. Not in game story, but uh, according to the game story, we'll see what happens. But um, in Scars of Mirrodin, basically what happens is Koth goes around the multiverse to recruit people. He um, co he convinces Elspeth, who left Alara, because if you remember in Alara, Nico Bullis took it over. And basically, well, he didn't take it over, he gained all his power back. Well, I don't know if he gained all his power back or most of it, but whatever the fucking case, she left Alara. Went to this arena, started battling dudes for her honor, or whatever the hell. And then, um, Koth basically, um, knows about Venser. If you don't remember Venser from a long ass time ago, Venser was basically Koth's, 
you know, best buddy. And when uh, Vincer, when Koth disappeared, Vincer went and looked after him. They find Vincer, recruit him, and then in, like, besieged, you have Nicol sending Tezzeret, who's back again, because Jace killed him. Um, originally, and killing him once isn't enough in this game, it seems. Everybody has to be brought back to life at some fucking point. Goes back and has plans for himself to basically overthrow Bolas, I think. I'm not sure, but... Whatever the hell, the story's bunk fucked. Um, all you need to know from this set in terms of the story is that... Uh, we find out Karn is the one corrupting the plane at the core. He's slowly being turned into a little dude. They have the Colossus, you know that Dark Steel Colossus. They converted it into the Blight Steel Colossus. They also did a bunch of other random shit. <laughs> this is now on their side. Um, it, it would be it would take nothing short of a miracle for Mirrodin to stay here, but it's not going to happen. I already guarantee you. Um, just judging by the story, because Mirrodin, because um, Mirren's, um main strategy, from what I read, is overwhelm the fuck out of them and. Because that didn't work the first time they tried it in Invasion. You know, it didn't work that time either, so... And, like, Phyrexia at its best put every single other known reality to shame in terms of power. So, there you go. Um, but uh, in terms of the cards themselves, I can't really remember anything other than the Mythics. And, to be completely honest with you, both of these sets kind of suck the balls big time because... Here's, and the reason why I say that is you have Infect coming in. It's kind of ironic that Wizards is pushing Frexia to be this new evil the whole multiverse has to be aware of again. And make, and make their entire archetype suck balls. <laughs> um, Infect is the new archetype if you didn't know. And Infect creatures, basically, they only have to get 10 hits on you and you become a nice permanent figure of Frexia. Um, it's kind of a sucky ass theme because number one, doesn't have evasion. Number two, it doesn't really have much in terms of things. Number three, you have to be aggro as fuck with it just to win. But with some new blue stuff coming in, like Corrupted Conscience, um, Distant Memories for your land, you know, it it can get pretty retarded at times. Um, it can't get retarded, excuse me, but it can get pretty good. It can get a lot better than it has been for a little while. And it really isn't so much as a, oh, look at me, I have this big dude now, rather than Oh, look, I'm running blue-black. You will die. Or something. Um, but not much else needs to be said about the sets other than there really isn't anything in there. Yeah, red got Slag Storm. Black got Blue Sun Zenith. And the Sun, the Zenith Suns are actually... they're In terms of the whole, they're okay. Probably the best one is, is Red Sun Zenith, I think. Because it's basically Disintegrate, only it goes back into the deck. So I think that was pretty cool. They gave us a suede old disintegrate. Yeah. Go read uh, the text on Red Sun Zenith sometime. And it scars let me hold on a second here. Let me find my book. Yeah, lots of background noise for you. Yeah, yeah. I just need to see something here. Oh shit. Well it didn't at least it didn't knock the camera out of place. <laughs> <laughs> kind of ironic that the massacre worm is in a besieged. <laughs> so, all right. So I'm looking through my book here. I'm trying to see if there's anything noteworthy to talk about in scars. That's rare and not complete shit. Oh, mimic vat. There we go. Mimic vat. Mimic vat and a gothic slag worm. Um, those two are probably one of the, some of the best cards in the set. Mimic Vat basically takes over a creature. Okay, here's the text itself. This is better. Imprint. When a non-token creature is split into the grievance for the battlefield, you may exile it. You may exile that card. If you do, return each other card exiled to Mimic Vat into its owner's graveyard. Um, basically, Mimic Vat can exile, can imprint a card, and then make a token of that card for tapping three. You pay three mana, tap, put a token onto the battlefield that's a copy of the exiled card. It gains haste, sec exile it at the beginning of the next end step. So basically, during your opponent's end step, you can make a token of it, and then during your upkeep or whatever, you make a token of it. It's pretty good. Um, what I think what's really going to happen with um, Besieged and Scars, what I really think is going to happen is, um, 
Oh no! Oh yeah, here we go. Redstone Zenith. Yeah. Oh, it's it's exactly like the disintegrate except no regen clause. It's it's exiled instead, but because it was never put into a graveyard. And let me see here. Frixing Revoker is the new meddling mage, except it's weaker, and it can be played in any deck. But whatever. What I think, I, what deck I could see honestly topping every event is if someone built a deck around around an OTK around Tesseract's OTK factor, and if someone could find a card that puts more more counters on everything, I think Proliferate is the main mechanic. I want to say I have it in here. I think I do. Let me peek. Yeah, an exorbital tide. Never cast a spell. Proliferate. So really, a deck running that and steady progress. If you can counterspell everything with stoic rebuttal, if you can basically say fuck you, just counter all this shit, Tesseract just wins games on his own. Um, and I and I know Tesseract's price is going down because he's not good in like all the other eternal formats. But really, you have no reason to play Tesseract in those other eternal formats. He's really slow. So and um. And now on to the bigger thing, which I kind of explained at the beginning of the video. I'm getting to the Planeswalkers. Basically, the Planeswalkers are kind of bumfuck retarded right now. Um, they can control the field. They can give you dudes. They can Elspeth gains life. Tezzeret basically makes an artifact of 5-5 five, five for nothing. You know, there's a lot of retarded stuff going on in the game right now. And really, Wizards... If you don't remember Tarmogoyf, if you don't remember Affinity, there is no hope for you at this point. Um, you're always going to print broken shit. Um, there's nothing much you can do. Um, personally, I don't really see um, anything coming out of the third set. All I, I see a bum fuck load of Infect coming from the third set, though, because Mirror Dim Siege, the only thing we really got that's worthy of note is a Phyrexian Batmother and the uh, Flesh Eating Imp. Um, I think that's what it's called, the Imp is. But Flesh Eater Imp, sacrifice a creature, it gains plus one plus one till end of turn. Basically, you can swing for game if they block with everything else. They don't get an infect counter, but you get free damage from the Imp. But only do it if you're going to go for game. Don't do it at random. And then, oh yeah, a couple more things for Scars I just saw lying around here that I... Well, I only need one copy of it, but... Semblance Anvil, here's the card right here. Um, that was pretty shit on camera, but anyway. Um, enters the battlefield, you may exile an online card from your hand. Spells you cast share, that share a card type with exile card, card costs two less to cast. Exile artifacts, and then Semblance Anvil suddenly costs one mana. Bring it out. Bring out your third Semblance Anvil. Yeah, sure, your whole hand is now gone. But what the fuck ever. You're probably playing blue, white, or blue, black anyway, so it really doesn't matter. Um... Semblance Anvil is really good. It helps speed up the Tezzeret OTK. I think that's that is the main card of the Tezzeret OTK. And once they call out Memory Sight, you're kind of fucked. <laughs> so you better be playing um, black to counter it with Stoic Rebuttal. And Stoic Rebuttal costs double blue, which is pretty sick. Because um, it's essentially counter spell. Because you're going to be setting off Metalcraft no matter what you do in this deck. So it's pretty nice to run. So pretty much run Metalcraft creatures, run that run the shimmer mirror run a bunch of random shit put it in for free and you win it's pretty much the best deck ever <laughs> if you can pull it off um i would love to see people pull that off i don't think it i don't think anybody ever will but it would be nice so oh. anyway um would i recommend anybody go out and buy cards from the set no, I don't recommend people go out and buy boxes of Mirrodin Besieged and Scars of Mirrodin. Considering the fact that, you know, the meta for these sets hasn't really been fully explored yet. There's still a lot of development to be done with cards and interactions and everything. There's still a lot to be done, especially with legacy sets and legacy formats. But the overall, these aren't really solid. They're pretty shit. Um, it's like... It's kind of like, um... Oh fuck, I can't remember I can't remember all the older sets up top of my head right now and there goes my heater, lovely. Um <laughs> So yeah. I wouldn't recommend people go out and buy boxes of these. Just search sites, buy singles for cards you want for a deck. If you really need trade bait, buy a box of besiege. Skip scars of mirrodin completely because there's nothing in there other than Elspeth and Cough worth trading for, as far as I can remember. Oh yeah, true conviction and shit, but Really, just look up card spoilers for these. You'll see what I'm talking about. There really isn't much reason for you to buy either boxes, so.
Anyway, hope you enjoyed, and I'll see you next time.